Hey everybody, I'm A.D. Wheeler and welcome to another live stream here on my Patreon channel and this week we're going to be talking about After Effects and Premiere Pro and uh, how to integrate the two together and we're going to also talk about uh, vlogs and why you should do them or why you shouldn't do them, um, many different uh, things there but we're going to get into that, we're going to talk about that a little bit and how you can do a vlog over on Premiere and use that uh, to create a daily vlog or uh, once a week vlog or something to that sort. So uh, let's get started. Let's move over and take a look at Premiere. I've got it all loaded up and ready to go. Remember, if you guys have any questions at all, you can ask them in the chat uh, over on YouTube and I will do my best to answer them during the broadcast. There is a delay of about 15 to 20 seconds. So keep that in mind when you're asking your questions. Um, we are running at 60 FPS tonight. So hopefully you guys are getting a really nice stream um, everything looks to be pretty good, so um, we'll keep our fingers crossed that the, the internet go gods smile upon us and it stays that way. All right, so as you can see here, uh, I have loaded up. This is a vlog that I did uh, back. Um, now, this is, let's start right from the beginning here because there was a discussion about this I was having the other day with Danny, and it's, um, it's about organization of things like blogs and photos. Uh, trying to do organization many years down the road or many weeks down the road into a project is a nightmare. So it's really good if you uh, start a folder called vlogs and then inside that you're going to put the another folder called the date or something that helps you keep them all sorted out. Um, that's really important to start that way. So I basically um, that's kind of the format that I've done here to save my vlogs. So let's talk about um, editing vlogs and how to go about shooting them. I want to talk about the equipment a little bit and then we're going to get into using After Effects and, and uh, together with Premiere and why you'd want to do that in certain situations. So um, one of the things that's really important is a camera. So really all you need to do to get started with vlogging is to have a cell phone. And it should be a cell phone that can shoot 1080p but I see a lot of vlogs that are very good that are shot in 720p. So they're not like super high resolution. And that's fine too. But there are so many apps that are available to get footage and get good footage on a cell phone these days that you can almost do everything on a cell phone, especially if you're just starting. Um, and you're going to you're going to want also you're going to want like a selfie stick to hold the cell phone out away from you um, i have a uh, polar pro which is way over there i can't show it to you um, but i'll put a link in the video description it's a really awesome tripod and a selfie stick and it's got magnetic feet on it and it's only like fifty dollars and it's it's excellent it comes with a phone mount and the whole nine yards but you can use it for a full-size camera as well which is pretty cool um so you can start with your cell phone. This is what I use to shoot like my opening dialogue. So up on the screen, which you can see right now, I shot with just the handheld phone. So let's just look at this opening uh, audio really quick. Hey guys, well I told you I'd do a vlog here on Thursday and well, it's typical New York, so it's raining outside. And... Uh, so change of plans. Uh okay, so basically I just had my phone on a selfie stick and I shot 1080p video and, and I talked to the camera like I'm talking to you guys right now. And so um, all it is is just kind of like uh, when I'm going to do a vlog, it's kind of like I'm going to go do something. Like in this vlog, we were going to buy new bikes. So I wanted to do a vlog about my trip to the place to get the bikes and then the experience of going to a local bike shop rather than going to you know, a department store or something like that. I could also do a little bit of advertising for that local bike shop because they took really good care of us. So uh, that was nice as well. And so I wanted to encompass that all in a vlog. So all I did was just acted completely normal and just took my camera with me. And I recorded little things along the way and essentially recorded everything. And then when I got home, it's the editing that really, you know, makes the vlog happen. So you can see in this first clip, that I did here um, that basically I, uh, I talked and then I played a little bit of a fallout intro um, because on my base of my joke that the weather was crappy here in New York. Um, and all I did was took a little clip that I recorded from a video game 
and I put a little bit of music in there that is well known for the Fallout series so that when people saw it, they'd know exactly what it was. And it's kind of one of those things like not everybody will know. Some people will think I just somehow shot it out my window, but that's okay too. But it's those people that, you know, kind of relate with the video and, and know uh, Fallout that can, um, it, you have to excuse me, I got allergies and I'm getting over kind of a cold, so uh, I might have to stop and take a drink here. Um, so what's really cool is that, you know, some people will relate with that. So here's that clip again, I'll just show you. So it's raining outside. And so all I did was just recorded that from the video game and then inserted it in there. And when I get back home with the footage, when I go to make these vlogs, I usually will play the whole footage back and painstakingly have to sit there and listen to myself talk. Now, I don't, uh, when I'm cutting the vlog, I don't always get everything right. Um, like what I'm trying to say, sometimes I'll, you know, fumble over my words or whatever. And so you just keep going, just, you know, start over, keep going, whatever. You're just going to edit that um, as you go. So sometimes you'll hear it cut or I'll do a, a cut uh, in the uh, video. And that's just all that is. It's just, uh, I'm just editing uh, the parts that I want to get the message out. And sometimes I talk way too much about stuff and I cut all that out too. Um, so let's move forward a little bit. Um, basically, this is an intro uh, to the video, and it's uh, just setting it up about me going out and getting the bikes. So the next logical thing to do is to, that I had to do, actually, is to put the bike rack on the car. So after I get done talking here, you can see, yeah, it's talk, talk, talk. And then there's a little funny part here. I think this is, um, yeah. So I, made, so I was talking about making mistakes. So here I clearly made a mistake that I did not catch when I was actually uh, cutting the video. Um, I, I didn't catch the mistake. So you'll hear me say that I'm gonna put the bike rack on the back of the bike. So watch what I did to fix that. I gotta put the bike carrier on the back of the bike. And yeah, so we're gonna do that. So that's all I did. I froze the video and put that little sound effect in there. You can download sound effects off the internet. They're totally free. You can find them just by searching on Google. But yeah, so um, that's essentially, uh, you know, how I do like edits. So I'll try to sometimes put horns in there or uh, I've done for some videos you guys have seen that I've done uh, where I put, you know, somebody say, what the heck or something, you know, uh, with a funny picture. Uh, so yeah, I found that mistake as I was going through and editing. Uh, so then I put the effect in there uh, with that, with the text over the top. Um, so after I get done, uh, with my little intro, what I consider the intro, then I'm going to go out and put a stationary camera down and I'm going to record me putting the bike rack on the car. So let's, let's look at that real quick. Interesting. All right, so you can notice like in the video that uh, there's a couple of cuts here. There are jump cuts. That's a great shot right there. Uh, jump cut here, then there, then there is a jump cut. And by a jump cut, I mean that you can see me move. Typically in the video, it's not, you know, you can tell I cut it and spliced it. The idea was, is that I had this little piece of music that I was using and I, it, I wanted those jump cuts to go with the, to the beat. So if you watch the uh, watch the video and listen to the beat, so you can see those two jump cuts go right with the beat. Uh, and a jump cut is generally when you make a, an edit, and it's a it's an absolute. There's no fading or cross fading or anything like that. It's just click real fast, a jump. So um, there's also another change uh, when the tempo of the music starts to pick up. Here. All right, so you hear the organ start to come in. Um, I actually, you can see a cut here in the video. Let me make that larger. So you can see right there, there's a cut in the video down here in the timeline. And what I did is I just made a razor cut there. And then I took the footage after that between these two points right here. And I clicked on the video 
and I changed the speed of the video by clicking on the speed and duration and you can see here it's 800% or so faster than it was. You can also just make it uh, the exact length that you need as well. Sometimes you can struggle with uh, figuring out uh, what the times are but in this case you can actually uh, you can figure out what uh, the, the actual length is instead of the percentage. So I just made that speed up and you can see here that it's sped up quite a bit um, and just to do the fast motion because you didn't want to sit and watch me screw all the bolts in and all that kind of stuff so here you can watch that go in fast speed So there you go, that's all in fast motion there, kind of goes through pretty quick. Um, hang on just one second here, I'm going to help somebody get into the video who's having trouble. Yeah, they're not being able to get in, so let me give them a video link so they can come and watch. Got to post this out on Patreon. I thought you guys were pretty quiet tonight, so let me just uh, find out what's going on. If so, we'll start the broadcast over. Woohoo! That's always fun. There's Janice. Hold on, Janice. I'm trying to make sure that other people have the link. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, I'm going to start over <laughs> because I, I'm not sure what happened. Um, earlier, uh, I did a test broadcast to set my bandwidth um, because I have a new bandwidth now that I'm dealing with. And for some reason, um, YouTube screwed up all my URLs. So... Uh, you're here, so I hope you have the time. Um, I'm going to still squeeze this in within an hour. Uh, so, so I'm going to rewind and go back, and we're going to talk about everything that I talked about so you didn't miss anything. So cool. All right. Let me start that over. All right, where are we? All right, week. Week number five. You won't see me on the big screen. Ah, oh, we could do that. We could do this. Ta-da. There, we played all that music. <laughs> so week number five, um, we're going to be talking about vlogging. We're going to be talking about Premiere and integration of After Effects. That's the whole thing that we're going to be working on. And so, yeah, um, that's all I said really at the beginning and said hello and thank you to everybody who's uh, supporting me on Patreon, which is really awesome. So let's go over there and we'll talk about what we're talking about tonight. All right. So <laughs> there we go. All right, so, um, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, I know Lori uh, Roland, if you know how to contact her, I don't know how to contact her. I just put a post on Patreon to let everybody know. But anyways, as long as you're here um, and it's recorded, everybody will get to see it anyway. Um, so, yeah, so I want to talk about vlogging. And, um, you know, vlogging is one of those things that uh, that you don't have to do it every day. It's something you should do at least once a week, although people really like to see them every day. It's crazy. I think if you want to be like the next big YouTuber, you have to do it every single day. It, that's a lot of work. If you can squeeze in a vlog once a week, I think that's really good to let people kind of know. Um, the whole idea of vlogging isn't about uh, information about photography. It's not information um, of teaching people something. All it is is a beside, behind the scenes hang out with me on what I do when I'm not doing this. And that kind of brings you closer to your audience. It makes them more relatable that you're just a normal person and you have a normal life and things are just, you know, uh, uh, real and not just all this all the time. So um, vlogging is a good thing to add to anybody's 
repertoire as far as um, YouTube and as a photographer. I think it's it's a big help. So what I'm going to teach you how to do is basically how I shoot a vlog and um, how I edit it and how I use After Effects if I need it um, to kind of uh, help in that respect and also how I don't need After Effects as much as I used to need it because of a few simple tools. So let's talk about tools first because that's important. One of the most important tools and the only tool that you need is a cell phone. Now granted it needs to be a fairly good cell phone. An iPhone 6, iPhone 5 would work just fine. Uh, the Samsung Galaxies or whatever, that's what I have here. Um, it's got to be able to shoot at least 720p video. Okay, uh, and that'll get you started. That's the main thing is getting you started. So, but a cell phone works really great. Uh, and you have lots of apps, so you're not stuck just shooting video. You can shoot time lapses. You can make all sorts of creative footage with a cell phone to add to your vlogs to spice them up a little bit. Uh, the other thing you're going to want is a selfie stick of some sorts. Now, I use a Polar Pro, uh, and it's a tripod and a selfie stick, and it's got magnetic feet on it. It's really versatile. It was only about $40. I'll put a link in the description of the video when I'm done here so that you can check that out. Uh, but it comes with a phone mount. It'll also handle a mirrorless or a DSLR camera pretty well, um, although it's really hard to hold that out there for very long amounts of time. I am shooting more now with my DSLR because I'm doing 4K video. Um, but, uh, you know, and I, and I shoot, uh, when I shoot my vlogs, by the way, I shoot with an 18 millimeter wide angle lens. So I don't have to hold the, the I don't have to hold it way out yonder. Um, so, uh, yeah, let me show you on this camera. So I don't, like, I have an 18 millimeter lens. I don't have to hold it like this to talk, you know. I can hold this pretty much right here in my face and, and talk, and it's just fine. And I can get all the angles that I need. Um, and in case you didn't see it, cell phone. I know it's hard to see on the small thing. The other way that you can go is with something like this, which is an Osmo. Um, this is uh, from DJI. It's fully stabilized. Um, you know, it has batteries in it. Yes, it does. Okay. So you can see here that the video is fully stabilized. So if I move the camera, it keeps nice and level and smooth. This is great. Um, it's not great for shooting selfies because it has a 2.8 uh, fixed aperture. And even at arm's length, it's still a little blurry. Um, so that's not ideal. But DJI makes a mobile version, which you just put your phone on. And it is awesome. And I'll show you why that's important uh, as we do more editing. So let's go back to the screen here and talk a little bit uh, about a vlog and how it works. So generally I start my vlogs out with an intro. So I just kind of explain uh, what I'm going to do for the day. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying, well, let me give you an example. We'll watch the beginning of this vlog and you can see. Hey guys, well, I told you I'd do a vlog here on Thursday and well, it's typical New York, so it's raining outside. And uh, okay, so you can see right off the bat that I had a little bit of creative uh, license with the clip. And I started it out with, um, what I do is I shoot the whole intro. And um, some, some, I will put that link down there, Janice, for sure. And sometimes, um, you know, when, as soon as I get home from shooting the full day's worth of video on all my devices, whatever devices I'm going to shoot on, um, and remember, back in week one, we talked about making sure that all your formats are the same so you don't have to convert formats and get them all the same before you do your edit. So you want to decide all of that first. And once you start doing these, you don't have to make these decisions each time. Um, once you start doing these, it's just like, oh, get the camera out, shoot it, edit it, post it. I mean, it's pretty quick. Um, so as soon as I'm done at the end of the day, I come home and I watch all of the video. And as I'm watching the video, I'll pick up mistakes or, you know, I'll try to listen to it like, is this interesting? Is this part any good? Do I like this? And I'll start hacking it up with the razor tool over here in Premiere and I'll just slice up where, where I think. So I kind of wanted to make a joke because I, I, you know, the way I kind of said it's typical weather in New York. I gave it the old New York thing. Thursday and 
and well, it's typical New York, so it's raining outside. So I didn't know I was going to do this until I watched it, and I'm like, oh, you know, this will be funny. Um, every time I play Fallout, it seems to be raining in the video game, so why not put a little clip in there? And I knew that not everybody would, like, know it was even Fallout. They might not even know it wasn't, like, a real house just looking out the window. But those who know the game will know the music, and they'll know that it's Fallout, and um, they'll kind of relate to that. So I thought that was kind of cool, and it's something that, you know, I didn't just stick it in there because I had seen it somewhere. I stuck it in there because I'm a big fan. Um, surrounded by Fallout stuff and Star Wars stuff. So you, you see a lot of Star Wars jokes and, and Fallout jokes in my video. Um, and the idea of the vlog, right, like I said, is so that people can kind of get a behind the scenes of, of your life. That's what, that's what it's all about. So I did that. This whole intro, I talk and talk and talk and talk. And what I'll do is I'll edit out, like, if I make a mistake while I'm talking, I'll actually just rewind my brain a few seconds and start with a start with the last sentence that I got right. Uh, so if I'm talking and I, and I say, yeah, well, I you know it's funny because I just pulled like the chair out of the re refrigerator. What do I mean, chair out of the refrigerator? I'll actually keep the video rolling. I won't stop it. I'll be like, so yeah, when I pulled the milk out of the refrigerator. So when I'm editing it, I'll just sharp cut the part that was bad, and that's fine. Jump cuts are really like very well known in vlogging today. You've seen them all the time. It's a cut where the video just jumps from one scene to the next while people are talking. And that's perfectly acceptable and perfectly fine. Years ago it really wasn't, um, but nowadays we don't have the time to rehearse whole parts and do all that. So you want to make these vlogs painless and quick as you, as you possibly can, and that's the easiest way to do it. It's just keep rolling, no matter what. And if you make a mistake, it's bad, you either laugh it off or you start back a sentence and, and you're going to use a jump cut. Let me show you an example <laughs> in this video. Exactly uh, what I did here while I'm talking. I actually say that I'm going to put the bike carrier on the back of my bike instead of the back of my car. Because so I'm explaining what they're going to see next. I'm going to go outside, i got to put the bike carrier on the car. But I said I'm going to put the bike carrier on the bike. So watch what I did to fix the mistake because I didn't catch it while I was recording it. I waited until uh, I got home and went, what the heck was I saying? So here you go. So I thought I would take you guys along with me. I got to put the bike carrier on the back of the bike. And yeah, so. So, so I put the little tire screech in there. That's kind of an old school kind of thing to do, but from cartoons kind of stuff. So, but it's the only, it was the way for me to let the people know. I, I know it was a mistake because believe me, YouTube, you'll have a thousand comments, people telling you you made a mistake. Because even when you do things right, they like to tell you that you made a mistake. So when you make a mistake, everybody comes out. Um, so yeah, I just put that in there for fun. Made a mistake, that's the way it goes. So the next part of the video is me actually putting the carrier on the car. So as you can see, I'm basically just shooting what I'm doing for the day. I was going to meet Danny to go to buy bikes, and so, um, yeah. So, um, Janice, is the video quality really good? You have to let me know. We're actually streaming this at 60 frames per second, a much higher bit rate tonight than we normally do, but I want to make sure that it's all good out there, um, the sound in, in the video. Um, just let me know when you get a chance. Uh, so, yeah, so this next part, I'm going to, there's no dialogue here. I put the camera on a small tripod pointed at the back of the car, and I'm just doing basically a video of me installing the bike rack on the back of the car. And the very first thing you think in your head is like, oh boy, that sounds exciting, right? Because uh, it's, it's not exciting. Um, so the whole idea here is basically for uh, me to just give people a quick look at what I'm doing um, on this day where I go to get bikes. So I'll show you how I cut this together, and then I'll explain what I did. Thanks, Janice. Thank you.
All right, so the last thing you want to see, anybody really wants to see, is, you know, 15 minutes of me putting the bike carrier on the back of the car. That's uh, not what you guys want to see me do. So um, what I decided to do is put some lighthearted, funky music in there and uh, use those same jump cuts now on the beats of the music but do it with the video rather than do you know do it with uh, still photos or anything like that. So what I did is uh, I knew the length of the song and how much time I had and how much I wanted to use. So I put those jump cuts um, in particular places. So if you watch, they go right on the beat of the music. There's one. There we go. And there we go. And the whole idea was just to ac accentuate that. And then you hear the organ come in, and that cuts now to a regular scene of video. And if you notice, I set, I timed that so that um, I didn't plan any of this. It just happens to the music, and I moved the clip so that it worked. But as soon as I set the stand down, it hit that drum beat as I set it down. So if you watch this, you can see that. So there you go, the drums start kicking in. Um, so it's just all of these little things are, you know, designed. This, these are editing. If you ever watch like um, any award ceremony where they give away uh, an award for the best editing or best production, the whole idea, these little tricks, these little things that sometimes we don't even notice what they are, um, but we say, wow, that's a really impressive video. And a lot of times it just has to do with sound and music and everything being edited so tight and uh, all working together uh, to, you know, make the video the best that it can be. So, I mean, how good can a video be of me putting a rack on the back of the bike or on the back? See, I did it again on the back of the car. So um, I also did a speed up section here when the song really picks up. So now you can see we're moving in fast motion. So it doesn't play back in fast motion, but you can see here the clip says, uh, if you look closely, it says 799.7. Um, the way that I did this is if you highlight the clip and you right click on it and you open up speed and duration, you can actually change how long a clip lasts for or how short it lasts. So um, you can do it by percentage or you can actually match a, a complete time if you're trying to fill a particular space. This time I was using a percentage um, and I just wanted it to go as fast as possible, so I cranked it up as fast as it would go. So you get a time lapse of me doing that, and then at the end, you're going to see me just basically shut the lights off, do one last adjustment. All right, and then it's on to a new scene. So I generally try to break these up into like an intro, a prep, and then a uh, a travel and then a setup and then the destination and then a travel and then a conclusion that's kind of like my whole format and basically i've just copied other vloggers that i really enjoy their vlogs so i i analyzed what they do in their videos and sometimes i don't use all that stuff it depends on the situation you know sometimes there'll be many cuts of setups and fails things that don't work along the way um, so it just depends on the uh, on the actual day and what happens. Um, if you watch my vlogs, and, and again, links for all of this will be in the video description. If you watch my vlogs that I've posted so far, you'll see that they're all a little different, um, but they're all the same too. They all have a, a flavor to them. So that, that basic setup is what I'm trying to do here. So the next is the travel. Now here's where it gets interesting. I made a major mistake during my travel sequence in filming. And it, I could have fixed it one way, and I decided to actually uh, go a little crazy with it and fix it another way. Um, and I'll and I'll show you um, I'll show you the clip of the driving, and then you see if you can pick it up. Okay, so I'm sure you saw that, but it was right here 
uh, in the red zone where where the all of a sudden the scene goes what what is that um I actually was at the light the light has just turned red so I grabbed my camera really quick not thinking I pressed the button and I had my the one thing I hate I had my camera up upright like that so I shot video in portrait mode which is a big no-no you don't do that you don't ever do that don't do it don't post it don't ever shoot video like this it's always like this always never shoot it this way if you shoot it this way and you that's the only way you shot it don't release it sorry it's just bad it's really bad don't try to fix it whatever and I did that so the only thing I could think is because I liked the footage was to rotate the video even though um, it was you know shot in the wrong aspect the way that I got lucky was I shot it in 4k and it only needed to be in 1080p so I had a lot of resolution that I could blow up and I could actually use that resolution um, to my advantage so that's what I did um, so here it says linked composition in uh, untitled and, and AE so what I did is I took this piece of footage which was a file over here and I what I did is I wanted to add or insert or replace with an After Effects composition so if I click on this whoops there so we're gonna edit original and when I do that off screen here you can't quite see it but it's coming up it's loading After Effects on my other screen. We're going to put After Effects over here so you guys can see it. Um, and then I'll show you what's happening. So it loads the project up. Now, I, when I edited this originally, I did the same thing. Hey, Lori, how you doing? Sorry for the bad link. I'm really not sure, still not sure what happened. Um, this is recorded, so you can catch up. Um, I did start over when Janice finally made it because I realized that it, did, it wasn't working. Um, so, but uh, I can't start over. We're quite a ways in now, and plus I'm on a time schedule that I have to meet. Uh, so we've made it to where we are right now, just to catch you up, is that we are in After Effects, uh, and what I'm doing is actually editing a piece of video in After Effects that I couldn't edit in Premiere because it was too drastic of an edit. What I needed to do was actually turn the whole video because I shot it in the wrong uh, perspective. So I needed to turn the whole video uh, around. And the only way you can do that is with a program like After Effects that allows you to treat the video as a plane and be able to spin it, turn it into a 3D object. I could map the video around an orb. I mean, there's all sorts of crazy stuff you can do in uh, After Effects and it's a wonderful program on its own but in this case I'm just going to use it to turn the video. So let me show you um, how that goes. For my phone to stop buzzing on me there. Um, so what I did is I loaded it uh, that composition in and here I'll zoom out and you can see my video is shot in the wrong right and all I did was used uh, keyframes just like you do in um, just like you would use them in Premiere and I just have the video play for a second and then suddenly make a quick spin, just like that. And then you'll notice that it, see how it changes a little bit there? There's a little bit of changing going on and a little bit of warping. And the reason for that is, is because I used a stabilization program within After Effects to stabilize the video before it came back into uh, Premiere because I wanted it to be perfectly level. I didn't want it to be you can see it got tilty and everything here So that's how I did that and if I was to make any edits here So if I change any of this Let's just turn off the video see what happens So if I change any of this and save it when I come back to Premiere Immediately you can see that the video has disappeared and that's because what I'm doing live in After Effects is affecting my composition live in Premiere. They work together. So you can save that and edit it later on, or you can render it out if you don't save it and then close After Effects and it just becomes a non-published uh, edit. 
um, and then it'll go into your final video, but you won't be able to actually, uh, you won't be able to ever edit it again. So you wanna make sure you save it on both sides. So I'm gonna show you, um, I talked earlier about equipment and about the Osmo and all that kind of stuff. Um, the other thing I wanted to, to tell you is this is also very important. This is a road without the cat on it. Um, this is a Rode video mic. They're about $50. They work on a DSLR. They'll work on the Osmo. You can see that I have a bracket. Let's go back to the full screen camera. Not camera, there we go. All right, so you can see that there's a bracket. I 3D printed this bracket. This mic actually clips right in there like that. And then you can tighten this down. If you don't have the cable through it, you can tighten it down like that. So when I'm, whoops, put it on the right way, Wheeler. So this normally is for your cell phone, by the way. So it actually hangs down below. There we go. It's just like that. And then the Osmo has a little plug-in right here in the front. So it plugs in. So now if I'm out doing the video, I can have the Osmo and have the mic pointed right at my mouth. The the cam the mic that's inside the Osmo is really bad, and this this is this one's really good. And you would use the little fuzz ball, and that keeps any of the uh, wind noise or anything like that out of your video. Now this works on a, a standard DSLR as well, and it works very well for uh, your audio uh, to keep it very consistent. All right, I wanted to share that with you. Let's go back to editing again. All right, so you guys can see how I could use After Effects. Hey, Jamie, welcome to the broadcast, man. I haven't seen you in here before. I'm sure you've been here, but you've been quiet. Uh, but it, uh, welcome, and it's nice to see your voice uh, out there. Um, so yeah, um, so I use that to basically stabilize the video. The rest of the video is travel video. And in the middle of that, you can see down here that I've lowered the music a little bit. Let me... Uh, let me get that up here for you so you can see what's going on there. So I wanted the music to keep going, but I also uh, have a speaking part coming up here. So what I did is I actually lowered the music below my voice. So you'll hear the music rocking out. All right, guys. Well, sorry about the audio. Originally, I was going to record uh, the trip there, but the traffic here is too heavy. It's like right at right about 5 o'clock. So I don't want to, you know, uh, be careless when I drive. So I'm just going to start the video once we get up to Corning and we go to this cool little bike shop uh, to pick up our bikes. So we'll see you then. Awesome. Ah, they close in 10 minutes. All right. So um, that was, that part actually was, um, I was on the street on the way there and I just, I think I was at a light and, um, I saw the time and I just quickly had the camera sitting there. The camera was on, but it wasn't recording. I just pointed it at that and, and pressed, the, pressed the button and said that <laughs> to cut in there um, as a kind of a dramatic thing. Ack, they close in 10 minutes and there's absolutely no place here to park. All right, so um, more comical, crazy stuff. Uh, that was just a simple zoom. Um, and uh, sorry you had to witness that. That was actually um, done with a keyframe. You can see that right here. We'll zoom in on the keyframe. And uh, all I did was I keyframed the position and the scale um, because I did have to get myself like moved perfectly. And it would have been fine without it, but it adds that little punch if, uh, if I put the zoom in there. So I did the face <laughs> all at the same time, okay? It's even funnier when you watch it back, um, at least. I think it's funny. Anyway, um, so that was the idea behind that little thing in there. All right, so remember I said that I try to do the intro, uh, the setup, uh, the uh, travel sequence, which we just did. Um, remember when you're doing all this stuff, don't give away your exact locations in your vlogs. This is very important. Uh, there are weird people out there. Uh, and so you never want to, you want to be very sly um, about the footage. And, and remember, no one's going to know the road. 
If you show a picture, you can show a picture from a different day of you driving on the road, and they wouldn't know that it was it wasn't the same day. Um, but I just generally just shoot the whole thing, and then I edit it down. So I just have the camera rolling like constantly. You never know what you're going to find, what you're going to see. Um, so it's good to have it just rolling. And I had it rolling during this whole time, even though I didn't have it up and wasn't paying attention to it. And a lot of the times, um, it was rolling footage of my car seat. That's all it was doing. So you just have to learn to keep it on, keep it going. Make sure you got room on your device to handle all of that video. That's important as well. So this is me talking about walking into the bike shop. And I didn't know how I was going to do this. Um, so I tried to make a little bit of a comedy out of it uh, and talk about how far away I had to park. Because I was thinking, well, um, here I just told everybody, you know, parking situation was horrible, blah, blah, blah. Ch the thing is, I found a place to park. Well, watch the video and you'll see what I, what I mean. I'm going to run to get there. So here we go. I'm going to run to get there. All right, here we go. Run, run. All right, we're here. Act cool. Act cool. All right. So I ended up finding a, <laughs> I ended up finding a parking spot right next to the place. Um, so yeah, I decided to just make a joke, a joke out of it instead of like you know telling everybody I had to run all the way there to make it. But I was actually right there, and uh, I had gotten a text message that uh, Dan Danielle was already there and everything was cool and we were all set. So all I did was just film the, the, the trip there. Filmed walking in. I wanted to make sure. Let's go check it out. So I wanted to make sure that everybody knew. Now, if you notice, I turned the camera away from the boys that were there. Um, I didn't want to put their faces in the video. Um, you know, I did my best to avoid uh, them and keep just the characters that I wanted in the video there, which was the shop owner, myself, and Danielle. No, come on. I need, I really need, come on. No, no. Please. You did it really want it. Bella. All right, so... Um, that was when I first saw the bikes. I was like so excited. And so I did the little hallelujah thing. Um, and then as I'm talking with the bike owner, I just casually said, hey, do you mind if I shoot video and do a little thing, a little spot? Because um, I want to make sure it was okay. Because some people don't like you shooting video um, in their establishment. Hey, Evan, thank you for making it, man. Glad you could be here. You missed my part, Evan, about never shooting video or releasing video that's in portrait mode. So you have to rewind and watch that part. It's very important. You need to watch it. Um, anyway, um, so I, I, um, I had a chance to talk with the owner. And as I was talking with the owner, this cat came out. And the cat was ginormous. The, cat, the bike cat, right? Bella the bike cat. Bella's like sensing something right now. What's on your mind, Bella? You want to be the next internet star? No. <laughs> it's an exercise she wants to do. Oh, I see. It's time to go. Oh, so she's like an alarm clock cat. She is. <laughs> Hi, Bella. Hi there. Wow. You're like a lion. You're the size of a lion. I mean, look. Look compared to the bike. Look at this. I'll just do a little perspective here. It's like a mountain lion. A lynx. Mountain lion. Is she just a baby girl? <laughs> All right. And you we'll, can be her friend if, if you give her treats. We'll stop terrorizing the kitty hey. cat. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, Bella. Wave to the internet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Margo just showed us the ABCs of... Okay, so basically I, I rolled camera through all of this and talked about, you know, and I basically just pointed the camera at whatever I was doing at the time. So this is all just uh, hanging out at the bike shop. And, you know, like... I said, you never know uh, what you're, what's gonna, you're gonna see or it's gonna happen. So as we're talking with Margot, uh, we we get another visitor. An old steam train today. Wait, there's another mountain lion. This must be the second alarm. Hi, <laughs> Rudy. <laughs> awesome. Rudy. This is the snooze alarm. <laughs> Look, internet, it's cats. 
These big cats. These are giant cats. Not, not camera shot. Okay, so <laughs> the funny thing is, is that what I said about you want to make sure that you uh, you keep the camera rolling because you never know what's going to happen, right? So the cat, of course, plays superstar. At all, right into the camera. Perfect. Perfect. Yep, that's, that, that's perfect. Awesome. <laughs> Well, that's a good stopping place, I think, is the, is the cat cam. So uh, thank you, Margo, and I can't wait to ride the bikes. It's going to be very cool. So maybe we'll do a video of that. Okay. Awesome. All right. We're, we're going to go pack up and get out of here. All right. So uh, the next scene that I did was us leaving. So I'm basically breaking everything down into just little sections as I'm doing them. Um, and it does take a little bit of practice. You're not going to get this exactly perfect the first time that you do it, but that's kind of you know <clears throat> that's kind of the fun part of doing this um, is basically uh, setting up these little scenes. So this part, uh, I took my camera and I put it on my uh, put it on my tripod and I set it at the end because I wanted to get a scene of us rolling the bikes out. So yes, I leave the camera there while I roll the bike out, but that's fine. The shop owner's awesome and. And, you know, there's nobody in the shop but us, and it's closing time. So this worked out perfectly. So I just left the camera there, and we do a walk-by. And I play some groovy music in the background, which is, you know, the whole, it's kind of the winding down part of the music, or the video. Okay, once again, I'm using jump cuts here to move the action along a little bit quicker. Okay, so you see a similarity here from the beginning footage where I used a couple of jump cuts and then I used the really fast uh, action uh, where I sped up this, the, uh, the speed here again, 600%. And then I'm going to do my closing part of the video and the end. So essentially we, we get the bikes in and I do a little thing here. And again, have the camera rolling. I uh, wasn't sure what I was just going to say. I was just going to say, hey guys, ending the video off and the store owner actually walked by the car and she made a gesture, which I didn't catch on camera, but she pointed at me and she went, like, you're talking too much because I was making the video, which was really funny and it made for a great ending to the video. All right guys, well we got the bikes. Um, yeah, and only my bike is back there. Uh, Danny's bike is in her car, unfortunately. Um, this bike rack that we have is kind of crappy. <laughs> and there's Margo. Mar Margo is finally getting to go home. <laughs> she just said this to me like I was talking too much. So um, anyways, make sure you check out the, the Corning Bike Works. It's totally an awesome place to get your bike. And um, hopefully we'll do some videos on the bikes. Who knows? Um, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed this journey with me. And uh, I think we're going to make another video this weekend. So we'll see you guys then. Talk to you later. Okay, so basically it was just a wrap, and that's the that's the vlog for the day. And it's, you know, seven, eight minutes long. Keep it ten minutes or less. That's perfect timing. Really not that difficult once you get these under your belt and you do them. And they're really cool. I, I love watching just that, that day. It's kind of a great memory just to go back and, and, and watch that. And at the end, I've got a little, uh, you know, subscriber thing and a couple of videos that I had on there. I do want to show you something. One of the reasons that you would want to use uh, After Effects. So I'm going to show you how to do this. And it's going to take a few minutes, so I'll do it and we can discuss other things while it's going. But if you notice this part of the video, it's a little shaky, a little bouncing around a little bit. Now, I didn't do anything to this video because it is shot in 1080, so it's fairly small. My camera was being really whacked. I think it was because I used it all day long but um, if I wanted to stabilize this video I would use After Effects now back in the day I would actually find all the footage that I wanted to stabilize then I'd load up After Effects and I'd stabilize it and save it and do all that kind of stuff and then then I would put it all in my project bin and bring it into Premiere when I was ready to make my project well it's much better to do it while it's in Premiere and I'll show you how to do that so we're going to select just the clip of me talking at the end 
and I'm going to right click on that and then I want to replace with After Effects composition just like I showed you on the other piece. We'll let After Effects take hold of that video. There it is. Now it's made its own uh, it's made its own project and you can see all these other ones. It'll keep all these together for you so if you do multiple edits they'll all stay in the same little package, the same little project uh, file so you don't have to go hunting for them if you want to make any changes. What I want to do is I want to stabilize this video as best that I can. So over here in After Effects it automatically sent this over and created a starting composition. I'm going to go ahead and right click on that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an effect so let me find where they put it now there it is and I want to do a stabilization effect find out where they hit it there it is all right warp stabilizer they moved it actually out of the effects so it's down here under track camera we're going to warp stabilizer VFX so we'll go ahead and hit that now it says it's analyzing in the background this is with it's doing all of its own stuff the very basic setting that it has on here is pretty good so you can go ahead and just let that do its thing uh, what's nice about this is that it can analyze and then if you make changes it only has to analyze the footage once so it's going to go ahead and do the analyzation of the video and they used to have a little uh, marker down here in the corner which I don't see it anymore that used to actually say oh wait it's over here sorry I got a warning Maybe that's why they wanted to get that out yep okay that's why it wasn't popping up because I had a window off to the side um, but they used to have like a little uh, thing down here that said how many seconds were left in the overall uh, the stabilization but I don't I don't see that anymore on here I think they've taken it away unless it's blinking up here at the top let's see if it changes at the top now so what's oh there it is right there so we're on frames 85 of 1162 so it's got three or four minutes to go let's um, go back to Premiere and you can see in Premiere that over here it's actually doing the same thing over here in Premiere it's telling us that it's analyzing the background so um, one of the things we talked about earlier is um, and Evan you weren't here I don't think Lori was here and Jamie wasn't here uh, vlogs should you do them should you not do them do you want to be a vlogger um, I think that it's important if you decide to do them you should do them about once a week um, and I've been horrible over the winter I just don't do them in the winter um, and I'm starting to get back in it now in fact the next episode that we do I'm going to the, the next episode is going to be a complete vlog edit for you guys so I'm going to show you I'm going to bring in the raw footage we're going to do the whole thing um, from from beginning to end um, and that way uh, we'll uh, you'll see how I manufacture one of these things from scratch um, and you'll get to see all the raw mess ups and everything it'll be a lot of fun um, anyways uh, so is it better to uh, Evan has a question here and by the way guys 30 seconds is about what the delay is so uh, give it about 30 seconds for me to answer your questions that'll help everything catch up uh, is it better to use after effects than distort warp stabilization in Premiere yes um, at the this distort warp stabilization in uh, Premiere is okay after effects is a more pro engine um, you get a better result uh, from that plus there's there's some more uh, things that you can kind of control in after effects um, but the main thing for linking is not just that it was like the you you weren't here but I did a video rotation which you cannot do a complete spin of a video and all of that in uh, after or in uh, premiere very well so after effects and I've done I've used also used it for um, different types of trap code um, particle effects and all that kind of stuff as well um, so it's it's a good practice to learn how to, to basically do this on the other side here's the other thing while it's analyzing and doing all that work over in After Effects I can continue to edit the project in Premiere which if you use the warp stabilization in Premiere you have to wait and that's kind of puts a the kibosh on continuing I can continue to do the work here or I could do it at the end or I uh, you know whatever but I can actually have After Effects working in the background 
while I'm doing all this. So that's kind of a, the other plus to it as well. Um, back to uh, vlogging and should you do it? Um, it's a great uh, way for others to relate to you as a photographer. It may not, it doesn't have to be about teaching, although you can put that stuff in there if you want. But I think the, the better idea um, behind vlogging is that maybe you're going on a photo walk and you want to give a, a behind the scenes of a photo walk, right? Um, that would be a good uh, idea for a vlog. Or you're going on a day trip and that's a great, I did one where we went uh, to a, a, a local state park and we got turned around, we couldn't go there, it was filled up and all this. So we ended up making a cool video at the end out of it. Um, completely, we ended up at a place there was nobody at, uh, which was awesome. Um, so sometimes that that happens. And it was shot across a couple of days because I couldn't get all the footage that I wanted in one day, so we ended up having to shoot it across a couple of days. So sometimes that's what you have to do. Uh, let's just check in on... Um, this one we'll talk a little bit more about uh, what do we got left looks like we're done let's look at the footage here all right so it's definitely stable and obviously the reason why I didn't do this is because you can see like I'm eating the camera and I really didn't like that but I'm just giving you this is just an example and now you can see it's pulled over here and and it's too small right so what you would have to do once you got it over here is click on it you can go to the scale and you can just scale up by grabbing a hold of the scale up and dragging it out so that I eat the camera but it's a lot more stable and it you notice Margo did <laughs> Margo's not there the tree is um, so uh, that was basically why I didn't use that if I go back into After Effects and I think I can control Z Yep, I'll control Z and then go back into Premiere. It puts everything back the way that it was. If I go to uh, Premiere and I control Z again, uh, it takes off that uh, scaling change that I made there uh, as well. So there we go, back to the original video. Um, so the vlogging thing I found is just that um, my numbers went up, way up when I was doing them about every week. So uh, I wanna get back to it because it, it really brings viewers in. Uh, as, as I said earlier, uh, shy away from giving people exact locations or routes. Like I did show uh, Corning Bike Company, but by the time people would view it, I obviously wouldn't be there. But just be careful of showing like your house address uh, or your license plate or any personal things like that. You want to keep those out of the video. Now, if you shoot your video, I shoot with reckless abandon. I don't care what I show. And then I will use like a blur mask or something in the video to hide those things so that they're not there. So if you look back to when we were putting the bikes on the back of the car, you can see that my, in here that my, uh, I put a little blur over that. And I just, you know, it blurs out the bike a little bit, um, but that's okay, I don't care. Uh, the main point here was you're not gonna see my license plate. So. Um, you know, and I do that with the house address, but I rarely, I rarely show the house address either. So, um, <clears throat> just a couple of, you know, safety things to keep in mind, but that's why, uh, you know, you know, vlogging I think is really good. And I think it can be done once a week just as a behind the scenes and just take your normal day. It doesn't have to be a special event. People just kind of like to hang out and see what you've got to do today. Um, when you're not doing all of this kind of stuff. So. All right, guys, um, that's going to wrap up this uh, broadcast. Next week, um, I am going to shoot vlog material over the weekend. I don't know what it's going to be about. I'm just going to pick a day, and you're going to get a vlog about what I'm doing that day. Uh, and it might be about 3D printing. It might be about a dinner we're having. I don't know. Uh, we'll figure it out, um, and we'll do an edit on that. Uh, make sure you guys post on, the, uh, on Patreon. Uh, and let me know what you want to know about if you have questions uh, that I can uh, answer for you guys. Uh, to, to add the blur, essentially all I did was created a mask. So um, let's just say uh, I wanted to blur. All right, here's the thing to blur. Suppose I don't like that track sign that's up there and I want to blur it. So if I want to get rid of that track sign, um, Lori's asking this. This will be the last thing and then I gotta run, guys. Um, what you do is just use 
uh, 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 opacity or a mask and then you add an effect of blur. So all I'm going to do is go to uh, let's see, effects, do effects, uh, type in blur. Oops, spell it right. Okay, so we just use a uh, fast blur here. I think. No, no, I just want Gaussian blur. Drag that up there. You'll get the little mask tools here. So there's that. And now, you know, I'm just going to do it quick and dirty. You can trace it with a pen. Or in this case, I'm just going to use uh, an O. Just put an O up there. Circle. I'll just put this around the trek. Okay. And then I'll go ahead and add some blurriness. And there we go. And that's all there is to it. Now, it'll only be on there for that clip. So you'd have to do it to each clip. Or uh, before you hack it all up, um, it's probably the best, the best thing to do is to uh, put the, on the original base clip before I did all my edits to it uh, to realize that I don't want that in there. If you want it on more than one clip and you have to do it after the fact, if you just click on Gaussian Blur and you hit Command or Control C and then go to your next clip, Command or Control V, next clip, Command or Control V, whether you're on a Mac or a PC, next clip, and so on. And now you can see it's on all of them. So it's really simple to add that blur across all of those. Now I'll leave that in there and people will be like, why did he blur out the track sign? That's weird. Anyways, uh, thanks guys. Make sure um, that if you have any other questions that you ask them over on Patreon and so that I can get them into next week's show. Um, it's going to be on making a vlog from scratch. Um, so, you know, uh, if you guys want to see something else, though, thrown in there or something for the following weeks, uh, we're getting towards the end of the basics part of this. Um, but I need ideas for more advanced types of editing and that sort of stuff. So please let me know. And thank you very much for continuing to support me over on Patreon. Uh, I love you guys and could not do this without you. Um, I, you know, basically will be going to work at Walmart. So, um, yeah, I appreciate your help. Um, and we will see you next Monday. Thanks, guys. Stay awesome.